Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast, Gibco LV Max Lentil Viral Production System, presented by Young Chung Ji, a scientist in the Life Sciences Solutions Group at Thermo Fisher Scientific. We are excited to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots. This event is sponsored by Thermo Fisher Scientific, and this live broadcast is brought to you by LabRoots. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the green Q&A button located in the lower left of the presentation window and type your question into the box that appears on the screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Also, please notice that you will be viewing the presentation in the slide window. To enlarge the window, just click on the screen icon located in the lower right. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the support button at the top right of the presentation window, or use the Q&A button to let us know that you're having a problem. Now, please welcome me and join in, please join me in welcoming Dr. Yang Cheng Ji. I will now turn the presentation over to him. Uh, thank you, Christy. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Yung Chang Ji. I'm a, a scientist too here in Thermo Fisher Scientific. Today, I will introduce you our newly developed product, the Gibico LV Max Lentiviral Production System. Now, to start with, uh, to start with, we live in a very exciting area of cell therapy, uh, which greatly lift us uh, the ability to cure cancers. Now, T cell receptor and uh, CAR T research has been a uh, hotspot in both basic and clinical research. The basic concept of uh, T cell therapy is that T cells can be extracted from the patient and uh, undergoes genetic modification. And these enhanced T cell will then get infused into the patient where they can recognize and kill, kill cancer cells. Um, so um, from concept, it's really um, straightforward process, but if we look at the manufacturing, uh, it's a whole lot complex. For example, um, you need to think about how to isolate and activate the T cells, and you need to think about uh, how to introduce your gene of interest into the cells, which involve a lot of genetic uh, cell engineering work. And uh, in the following step, we need to think about how to grow and expand the cells so we have enough modified T cells for treatment and the subsequent uh, show, um, um, quality control and characterization and so on. Really, it's a, a multi-step and multi-factor um, process. In some official scientific here, we put huge effort into the cell engineering, especially uh, gene delivery part. And we hope we can move the cell, cell therapy forward by um, providing great product that enable our customer to cure more cancers. So uh, for today's talk, I will focus on our newly developed uh, lentiviral production system. To put everybody on the same page, I want to briefly uh, introduce how Lenti works. Um, basically, lentivirus vector is a modified genetic carrier that delivers your gene of interest into the T cells. Uh, here we have a, a lentivirus vector. Once it uh, encounters the T cell, it will fuse into the cell membrane and release its genetic content. Usually this is uh, an RNA uh, molecule, and this RNA will undergo cellular processing and get integrated into the genome and subsequently is pressed on the cell uh, membrane. In this particular case, uh, uh, it is the uh, chimeric antigen receptor, in short for CAR, is pressed uh, on the cell membrane. Uh, and these CARs enable the T cells' ability to recognize cancer cells. For a typical clinical trial, usually uh, several millions of this type of uh, modified cells are needed per kilo of patient per treatment. So to modify this many T cells, we also need millions of lentivirus vectors to deliver our gene of interest, which leads to our effort to deliver, uh, uh, to produce, develop a, a high yield lentivirus production system. 
So uh, currently, most people are using the third generation production system, uh, which co-introduce uh, four plasmids into the HEC 293 divided mammalian cells. On the upper left here is a, a schematic of all four plasmids. So uh, the transfer plasmid contains your gene of interest, while the packaging plasmid actually contain two plasmids, which encode the GAC, pore, and REV gene of the lentivirus. And the fourth plasmid is the envelope plasmid, which encode the VSVG uh, gene. To produce a lentivirus, so you need to, uh, all four plasmids need you to be um, co-transfected into the same cells and then you wait, let the cell uh, synthesize and secrete the virus in, and uh, you harvest the virus in the uh, culture supernatant. There are uh, several versions of uh, 293 cells system in the, on the market now. So uh, some people are using adherent 293 cells or uh, 293 T cells, um, and while others prefer to use adapted 293 suspension system. And uh, Samuel Fisher provide both both solutions for both adhering and suspension uh, systems. For uh, adhering production, we have the lipofactin 3000 re transfection reagent, which uh, is which has been proven to be a very valuable uh, tool. Uh, the titer yield is very high. It works great with uh, uh, large insert gene, and uh, the region actually is very gentle, so uh, which is um, critical for maintaining a healthy culture. And uh, also, we use reduced uh, region dose, which is uh, great for um, long-term uh, cost saving. Working with lipofactamin 3000 is quite uh, straightforward. You just co-transfect the four plus mate, uh with lipofactamin 3000 P3000 combination, and then uh, with the uh, 293T or 293FT cells to produce your virus, and then you collect the virus and uh, do the marrying your, of your titer. I want to mention here, uh, so if you don't have the third generation lentivirus production system, uh, Thermal also um, have commercial available uh, wide power lentivirus packaging mix uh, with optimized plasmid ratio. So what you only need to do is to construct your gene of interest into the pilente expression um, plasmid and co transfect this uh, construct with the wild power packaging mix. Typically, with lipofactamin 3000, we can get about uh, 8 to 9, 10 to the 7th functional titer. It is greatly uh, improvement over PEI and uh, lipofactamin 2000. And we also developed a very detailed protocol. Um, for this specific application. If you are interested, please follow the uh, link on the right here. It will guide you to the very detailed protocol there. For those who are interested in suspension culture, uh, so we have our um, next generation LV Max lentivirus production system, uh, which will fit your needs very well. And here are some highlights of uh, the system. Um, so it, the titer of the system will be even higher. It can reach uh, 2 10 to the 8th TU per meal. Uh, and uh, it is easier to manipulate. Um, the system will be smoothly adapted to um, bioreactor production, which is suitable for large scale um, production industry use. And uh, the current version of the system, uh, the product is IO, and uh, the GMP version is at its full speed and will come in soon after. So in this system, we uh, introduce several new components which fit very well into the current workflow. Um, we uh, developed a brand new transfection reagent called the LV Max transfection reagent. Uh, which is specifically designed to achieve high uh, transfection efficiency in high density cells. And the Gibico viral producing cells uh, was optimized uh, to grow in very high density and maximum virus yield. At the time of transfection, we uh, introduced the LVMAX supplement. This critical element 
um, balance the cell growth and viral production. In other words, it slows down cell division and redirect cells to, uh, more towards the viral protein synthesis um, pathway. And uh, after transfection, we developed a single shot booster called the uh, uh, LV Max Enhancer, which greatly enhanced the uh, cell's ability to synthesize and secrete more uh, virus. So uh, the Gibico LV Max lentivirus, um, lentiviral production system, we introduced four new elements, uh, the high density uh, viral production cells, we have the supplement to modulate um, cell density. We have a uh, high efficiency transfection reagent, um, plus the boosting enhancer. Together, this system can yield um, at least 20 times more lentivirus um, particles than the current system. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this system will be launched soon this year. And if you are uh, interested in testing our system, it's currently available through our beta testing program. And uh, a lot of people are interested in AV production. So I can tell you um, this system has been validated for AV production, and we are actively developing program uh, that uh, try to uh, optimize the conditions uh, for a maximum AV yield. So in the following uh, section, I want to um, highlight some of the key features of uh, the individual component in this uh, product. Uh, firstly, the sales. So for viral, uh, virus production, really the more sales out there producing virus, uh, the higher the yield. Our Gibico uh, viral producing sales can grow up to 11 million per meal without losing viability. So in this particular example I'm showing you here, uh, we grow the cells in different size of shaker flask. So uh, 125 mil, 500 mil, or uh, one liter. As you can tell, uh, when seeded at the same density, they grow consistently well. And the viability <coughs> uh, maintains above 95% up to six days. And at this time, uh, the um, sales almost uh, reach 11 million per meal. And uh, at the time of transfection, we introduced uh, LV Max transfection, uh, LV Max supplement, uh, which balances the cell growth and uh, uh, high uh, virus yield. On the left figure sh uh, here, I'm showing you uh, the cell culturing with different amount of the uh, supplement. You can tell uh, with two liter of the supplement, there's uh, not that much effect. While too much, it's, it is uh, actually um, bad for the sales. And we really found that 5% is very sweet balance that we, uh, we can make, uh, maintain the healthy um, culture. On the right here, um, so we combine this different amount of uh, supplement together with uh, uh, different uh, production density at 2.5 million per meal, 4 million per meal, 4.5 uh, million per meal. What we find is that uh, at 4 million per meal production density with 5% uh, of the culture supplement give us the, the highest uh, virus yield. As compared to uh, those without any supplement, there's a at least three times the boost of the virus production. And again, if you put too much of the supplement, it will have adverse effect on the uh, virus production as shown on the far uh, right here, column here. So now we have the virus, we have the supplement. The next thing is really to screen a good uh, transfection reagent and the enhancer. For both tasks, uh, we use the uh, design of experiment, or DOE, as our powerful tool, which enables us to do uh, high throughput screening. From the beginning of the screening to the uh, last step of validation, uh, the product actually went through several rounds of uh, screening, uh, testing, and analysis, and retesting. 
So in the following, I will show you some of our uh, examples um, in our development in our development uh, process. For LV Max transfection reagent, we really took advantage of our uh, in-house LIPI libraries, did a very comprehensive screening, uh, try to find a transfection reagent that uh, specifically suitable for this uh, particular uh, application. Uh, the picture, uh, the figure I'm showing you here is really on the last several round of screening uh, in our uh, development process here. Uh, you can see uh, several of these clearly stand out against the internal control. And uh, these leads were not the, our formula, uh, final formulation yet. Um, in the following experiment, we will combine these leads with all other um, components in the product to really optimize the uh, uh, condition and pick the maximum, uh, pick the transfection region that give us the maximum virus yield. And similar story uh, with the uh, LV Max enhancer. Uh, so uh, our new uh, enhancer formulation can boost the virus production at least tenfold. And uh, not only the formulation itself, but we also tested uh, how much the dose and uh, what the timing uh, to add the enhancer to really guarantee uh, uh, our system is, is, uh, uh, has the best potential to yield uh, the maximum virus. So um, taking all together with uh, all the optimized conditions, our system can yield uh, up to uh, 210 to the eighth functional titer per crude harvest. And uh, this panel uh, just illustrates, uh, is this panel is a simple uh, swap experiment to illustrate uh, individual component contribution to the system. For example, in col column two here, we simply replaced uh, our transfection reagent with PEI. Uh, there, you, as you can tell, there's immediate uh, three-fold drop in uh, virus yield. On column three, uh, we uh, replace our supplement and the enhancer with the sodium butyrate. And <coughs> excuse me, and uh, a six more fold uh, decrease there. And on the last column, we are able to reproduce uh, the published result with. Uh, 293F and PI production, as you can uh, easily tell um, how much fold our system improvement uh, over the current system there. So now we have the system. The next uh, step is really to develop a comprehensive but uh, and easier, easy to follow protocol. This is a summary of our detailed protocol. So basically, you would seed uh, the cells at three million per meal um, be the day before transfection. And at the time of transfection, you would add 5% uh, of the uh, LVMAX culture supplement uh, and dilute the cells to uh, four million per meal. And this is our production density. And then you do the transfection. You simply prepare diluted uh, transfection reagent and the DA and combine them, incubate them for uh, 10 minutes, and add the incubation to uh, the cells. And uh, 12 to 16 hours uh, after transfection, this is um, typically the next morning, you would come in to add 4% uh, of the LV Max enhancer, and 48 hours you would uh, uh, harvest your lentivirus. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, now, based on developmental stages, uh, we have development, uh, developed different uh, platforms and uh, pro protocols for, to fit your needs. For large-scale screening, we have the 96-well uh, protocol. Uh, and for um, pilot testing or laboratory use, we have um, various size of shaker flask production volume varying from uh, 30 mil to uh, 800 mil. And we have developed a protocol for, uh, for industry use, 
uh, we have developed a protocol for uh, two liter stir tank bar reactors and uh, more protocol are under activity development uh, for even larger scale bar reactor, uh, stir tank bar reactors or wheel bar reactors. Uh, this is uh, the typical result we can get from a uh, uh, various platform I just mentioned before. Uh, so um, on the uh, on the bottom here is the different size of cultural vessels along with their uh, minimum and the maximum uh, cultural volume. And the bar shows you um, the functional titer uh, we can achieve. So you might notice there's a slight, uh, slightly decrease of titers with the increased uh, volume of production, uh, which is common in practice, and probably due to the uh, due to slightly changes in culture conditions uh, like uh, pH or uh, oxygen or geometry changes. Um, so uh, with more tight control of these conditions in bar reactors, we are able to uh, yield, uh, achieve um, similar higher, similar high yield uh, at the uh, small sugar flask. So uh, this is what the product will look like, uh, and uh, the key information are listed here. And if you are interested. Um, please do not hesitate to contact the email highlighted here. And uh, I'll stop here and uh, happy to take some questions. Thank you, Dr. Ji, for that informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window, type your question into the box that appears on your screen, and click on the send button. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. So let's get started. Our first question is, can you explain what the origin of Gibco viral production cells is, and does it contain the T antigen? Oh, it, it is derived from 293F cells, and uh, the cell doesn't contain T antigen. Okay, thank you. Next question, is the enhancer animal origin free? Yes, it is uh, animal origin free, and I want to mention that all the components provided in the kit are animal origin free as well. Next question. For suspension transfection, do we need to change medium after transfection? No, uh, that's the beauty of suspension culture. Uh, you don't need to change medium, uh, and also, especially um, during cell recovery, you are not supposed to change medium as well. So um, the whole um, process, so no medium change. So it's a lot. It's, it's a big saving uh, to the medium part as well. Okay, next question. Can I keep the DNA reagent mixture incubated for a longer time? Uh, typically, we, uh, we will keep the complexation uh, at the, uh, for about 10 minutes, but we also test it for uh, even longer. For example, 30 minutes, one hour, and one hour and a half. Uh, it still has the similar um, uh, virus yield, so um, it's quite uh, the 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 complex is quite stable. 
So you're good to if your your application requires more time, uh, it's okay to uh, keep them for longer time. Okay, next we have, what is the LVMAX enhancer? It's a proprietary uh, formulation. I don't think I, I'm, uh, it's, I have legal obligations. I don't think I can disclose that. Okay. Well, if there are no more questions, I would like to once again thank Dr. G for his presentation. I would also like to thank LabRoots and Thermo Fisher Scientific for making today's educational webcast possible. Additional questions will be answered and published on Thermo Fisher Scientific's website. You will receive an email notification when answers are available. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through April of 2018. You will receive an email from LabRoots letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. That's all for now, and thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.